Hi, I'm Ross Bridgeford, the founder of LiveEnergized.com and the creator of that Alkaline Reset Cleanse. And today I want to talk to you about cruciferous vegetables and your thyroid. I am sick and tired of the conflicting information out there. It's confusing people, it's leading people to bad decisions and it's ultimately harming your health. And it makes me mad. This is about as mad as I get. Goitrogens, cruciferous vegetables, it's a super confusing topic and it doesn't need to be confusing. In our, um, as Mark Hyman puts it, our pop nutrition culture, it's become a really, really easy way for a bunch of websites to get your attention, to clickbait you with headlines like, hey, you know, kale, all these thoughts, these foods you thought were really, really awesome, are actually all of a sudden really bad for you. How all of a sudden is kale bad for you? The logic that is out there, the logic as to how they're making these claims about cruciferous vegetables is just super fuzzy and scientifically, it's flawed beyond belief. Now, I want to make this clear right up front. Cruciferous vegetables are absolutely ridiculously good for you. They're alkaline, they're antioxidant rich, they're proven cancer fighters. They contain an abundance of nutrients that are so important for your thyroid health, as, as well as the rest of your endocrine system that's looking after all those hormones for you. So why? Are people saying to avoid them? Well, the fuzzy logic is because cruciferous vegetables such as kale, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, watercress, these types of foods, all of the foods that I eat a absolute ton of, these all contain substances that are something called goitrogenic. And substances that, can t that create a goitrogenic reaction, they can inhibit iodine from actually reaching your thyroid. And as your thyroid really needs iodine for proper functioning, well, you can see how they've created this dotted line there. And this is where the kale naysayers are coming from. They're saying goitrogenic foods inhibit iodine, the thyroid needs iodine, but if you just peel back even one tiny little layer, you see that it is absolute madness to stop eating these powerful green foods. To put it clearly, you would have to eat an absolutely insane, dangerous amount of these foods all day, every day, and also have a severe chronic iodine deficiency for this level of goitrogenic activity from these foods to even register in your body. The body easily copes with the amount of goitrogenic activity that these foods create. It deals with it easily. It doesn't even scratch the surface. These guys, the naysayers, they're just putting two and two together and getting 50 and they're making millions of people stop eating some of the healthiest foods on earth. Let me ask you, where is the evidence? In all of the history, there has been just one case report, and this isn't even a study, one case report of an 88-year-old woman who developed hypothyroidism after she ate over a kilo to a kilo and a half of raw bok choy. All she ate raw bok choy all day, every day for seven months. This is absolutely crazy. A kilo and a half of just bok choy for months. If you ate that crazy amount of any food, you'd probably get issues. So to check on this and understand what was going on, there was a follow-up study that was conducted after that case was found, where subjects had to consume 150 grams a day of Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are one of the most supposedly goitrogenic foods on earth. They ate 150 grams for four weeks every single day. And the result? None of the participants had any adverse effects on their thyroid function. The simple truth is that you would have to consume an insane amount of raw cruciferous vegetables all day, every day for them to have any form of effect on your thyroid function. And even then, even then, if you've got sufficient iodine intake, which let's face it, 99.9% .9 of people in the developed world have no issues with iodine in their daily diet, the body would still be able to deal with it. In another study from 2011 in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, these guys discovered that vegans who had a higher urinary thiocyanate content, which is indicative of higher levels of cruciferous intake and lower levels of iodine intake, even these guys had no difference in their thyroid function, which was in the normal healthy range. Remember, cruciferous vegetables have been hugely well-researched and hugely proven to be cancer-fighting, antioxidant-rich, anti-inflammatory, and so, so good for your health, particularly 
If you have got a thyroid issue or any other hormonal imbalance, these foods are vital for regaining that balance. They're anti-inflammatory, they're antioxidant rich, they're alkaline, and they're packed full of goodness. As with my video on the oxalate myth last week, the real problem here, the real risk for your thyroid is consuming gluten containing grains and sugar. The damaging proteins, particularly found in gluten, have been repeatedly proven to cause under and overactive thyroid, not cruciferous vegetables. Now, if you're still concerned and you've got an existing thyroid condition, you can easily remove all of this danger, all of this potential risk by simply steaming or lightly boiling your cruciferous vegetables. This removes all of the compounds from the food that can then become goitrogenic, but really you do not need to worry about this issue. So the takeaway message is really, really simple. If you don't eat an insane amount of goitrogenic cruciferous vegetables all day, every day, and if you're not also chronically iodine deficient, and even if you are, to be honest, this is probably the least of your worries, you really, really have zero worries when it comes to cruciferous vegetable intake. Again, as always, don't believe the hype. If you read something and it seems just too fantastical, do the research. Is there science? Is there proof behind it? Now, if you do have any level of thyroid issue, or if you just want to get more energy, or lose weight, or heal your digestion, remove inflammation, or anything along those tracks, I think you're going to love my free training that starts just next week. It's my Alkaline Cleanse Kickstart Workshop. It's going to be three content-packed videos that's going to have workbooks, Q&A sessions, and all sorts to give you the framework, the fundamentals on how to do an Alkaline Cleanse. Doing a cleanse it's just so, so powerful and it's so effective and it pays you dividends for years and years to come. So I'm gonna teach you guys that absolute fundamentals on how to do a cleanse is gonna kick off next week. So if you wanna be a part of that, look at the link below this video. Get yourself registered so that you know when these videos are coming out. I'm not just gonna be shooting these videos out willy-nilly to everyone. I really need you to register if you wanna see those. It starts next week and it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Now. Once again, cruciferous vegetables, not a problem. Oxalates, not a problem. Keep eating these beautiful green foods with wild abandon, and I promise you it's gonna repay you with interest. It's absolutely fantastic for your health. Don't believe this nonsense that's out there. Until next week, guys, until the cleanse kickstart begins, have a fantastic day. Any questions, any comments at all, stick them below the video, and I'll try my darndest to get back to every single one of you. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.